the only country in the world with NO natural rivers at all, has secretly created the longest artificial river in human history. Longer than the Earth's diameter, containing enough steel to build 50 Eiffel Towers. And the craziest part, they are pumping the ocean uphill to the tops of mountains. A shocking reality is unfolding. This is the most audacious survival plan of the 21st century by Saudi Arabia. A system that, if it were to stop operating for more than 48 hours, an entire civilization could be wiped out. The latest satellite data from NASA and the GRACE program reveal a brutal truth. The Arabian Peninsula is sinking. For millions of years beneath the desert sands lay enormous water reservoirs, known as aquifers. It is estimated that around 500 billion cubic meters of water once rested there, remnants from the Ice Age, when this land was still green and fertile. This figure only begins to hint at the true scale of the crisis. To produce one ton of wheat in the desert, they must consume three to four times more water than farming in a temperate climate. Four out of five portions of ancient groundwater accumulated over millennia have vanished permanently in just 30 years. They are extracting fossil water, a resource that cannot be renewed. Once you pump up a single liter of water, it will never return. Massive sinkholes have begun appearing across the desert, swallowing roads and infrastructure as the ground beneath becomes hollow. The Saudi government was forced to shut down its wheat program in 2016, openly admitting defeat to nature. But the damage was already done. The threat is real. If reliance on the last remnants of groundwater continues, Saudi Arabia will become truly uninhabitable by 2030. They had no other choice. If nature would not provide water, they would have to take it from the sea. And so, the artificial river project was born unlike anything humanity had ever seen. Unlike Libya's great man-made river, which merely tapped groundwater, Saudi Arabia chose to draw water from the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf, pumping it uphill thousands of meters into the interior. This system now includes 14,000 kilometers of main pipelines. To put that into perspective, the Earth's diameter is approximately 12,700 kilometers. In other words, if all these pipelines were laid end to end, they would be longer than drilling straight through the Earth's core to the other side. This is the largest drinking water transport network on the planet, far surpassing the famous California Aqueduct in the United States, which is only about 1,100 kilometers long. While California spent decades locked in legal disputes just to expand its pipelines, Saudi Arabia simply issued orders and built. Why bury everything underground? The answer is simple, to fight two enemies, evaporation and sabotage. With ground temperatures frequently exceeding 55 degrees Celsius, an open canal would lose up to 40% of its water to evaporation before ever reaching its destination. Moreover, underground placement protects this vital lifeline from devastating sandstorms and serious security threats. But the engineering challenge was not limited to length alone. This was not merely a water pipeline. It was a colossal, high-pressure system. Water had to be forced from sea level up to the capital Riyadh and other mountainous cities, overcoming an elevation of 2,000 meters above sea level. Imagine having to push a mass of water, equivalent to 5,000 Burj Khalifa towers, up a mountain every single day. Gigantic pumping stations use modified jet engines to generate the required pressure. This system consumes an amount of electricity comparable to the total demand of a small European nation just to keep the water flowing. The greatest engineering challenge lies within the Sarawat and Hejaz mountain ranges. To move water from the coast into the interior, engineers were forced to drill through some of the hardest granite on Earth. They employed massive tunnel boring machines similar to those used to carve tunnels through the Alps in Europe. However, here the heat deep inside the mountains combined with extreme desert temperatures to create working conditions unlike anything ever encountered. Machinery constantly overheated and diamond drill heads wore down at five times the normal rate. Engineers from Germany and Japan, upon surveying the site, reportedly exclaimed that the geology was extraordinarily difficult 
comparable to trying to break reinforced concrete using primitive tools. One of the longest water conveyance tunnels in the world, the Jubail Riyadh Water Tunnel, stands as proof of this ambition. Two parallel steel pipelines, each with a diameter of 2.5 meters, run side by side and are protected by the most advanced cathodic anti-corrosion system available, preventing salt water from eating away at the steel for 50 years. Every single meter of pipeline is fitted with fiber optic sensors, capable of detecting even the smallest changes in pressure or microscopic leaks, transmitting data in real time to an AI-driven control center. The result? A continuous flow of 9 million cubic meters of water per day circulates silently beneath people's feet without making a sound. But pipelines are only the bloodstream. The heart of this machine lies in its desalination plants. And Saudi Arabia does not build plants, they build desalination cities. Look at Ras Al Khair. It was once the largest desalination plant in the world, but that record has since been broken by the Saudis themselves. Today, the desalination complex at Jubail, along with new projects such as Jazla, is deploying an unprecedented technology, solar energy integrated reverse osmosis. The old thermal distillation process consumed enormous quantities of oil simply to boil seawater. This created a paradox, burning oil to produce water, while simultaneously damaging the climate. Before 2010, roughly 25% of Saudi Arabia's daily oil production was burned solely to generate fresh water. That was an economically unsustainable model. The new technology completely changes the game. It uses polymer filtration membranes with pore sizes as small as 0.1 nanometers. Under extreme pressure, water molecules are forced through the membrane, leaving salt, bacteria, and impurities on the other side. The real breakthrough lies in energy efficiency. The newest plants operated by the Saudi Water Partnership Company have reduced electricity consumption to less than 3 kilowatt hours per cubic meter of water, a world record for efficiency. Older plants required 12 to 15 kilowatt hours for the same volume. In just one decade, efficiency has increased by four times. And it does not stop on land. Saudi Arabia is now deploying floating desalination plants, massive vessels carrying full water treatment facilities. These ships can travel to any coastal port facing an acute water shortage, connect their pipelines, and pump 50,000 cubic meters of fresh water per day directly into the national grid. This is a strategic solution. Even if land-based plants fail or are damaged, this fleet of water processing ships ensures that the nation never runs out of water. However, every miracle comes with a price, and the price here is brine. When fresh water is separated from seawater, what remains is an extremely salty, highly concentrated solution filled with treatment chemicals and heavy metals. For every liter of fresh water produced, 1.5 liters of this toxic wastewater are discharged. The Persian Gulf is now the saltiest body of water in the world. Directly releasing brine into the sea is destroying coral reefs and bottom-dwelling ecosystems as excessive salinity reduces oxygen levels in the water. This has become a dead zone that international environmental experts have repeatedly warned about. According to a United Nations report, Saudi Arabia is responsible for approximately 20% of global brine discharge, a staggering figure for a country with only 35 million people. But Saudi Arabia is turning waste into gold. The latest project of the Saline Water Conversion Corporation goes far beyond water purification. They are beginning to extract minerals directly from brine wastewater. This concentrated seawater contains large quantities of lithium, the white gold of electric vehicle batteries, rubidium, an ultra-rare metal, and magnesium. Rubidium is a striking example. It is an extremely rare metal used in advanced optical and precision electronic technologies with a market price reaching up to 100,000 US dollars per kilogram. While the rest of the world must excavate tons of rock to obtain just a few grams, the Saudis already have it flowing in the wastewater they once planned to discard. Instead of dumping toxic waste into the sea, they are building an entire chain of facilities to extract these valuable metals. The goal is to transform the water industry into a mining sector that requires no digging. 
If successful, Saudi Arabia will control not only the water market, but also a portion of the global electric vehicle battery supply, reducing its dependence on external sources. Underground rivers and desalination are not the whole story. This nation wants to control the sky itself. Saudi Arabia's artificial cloud seeding program has reached an industrial scale. Using aircraft and drones, they fire particles of silver iodide into electrically charged clouds. These particles act as condensation nuclei, forcing water vapor to cluster and fall as rain. In 2024, the program conducted more than 400 cloud seeding flights. The results were astonishing. Artificial rainfall increased annual precipitation in the Riyadh region by nearly 20%. Flooding even occurred in the desert, an almost surreal sight. This rainwater is not wasted. It is captured by a network of 522 smart dams that have been upgraded with IoT sensors to optimize water release and storage. However, this has also sparked international debate. Neighboring countries have begun to worry about the idea of cloud ownership disputes. Does forcing rain to fall over Saudi territory make other countries drier? This is an unprecedented legal question, one that the international community is still struggling to resolve. This controversy ties directly into the most ambitious project of all, the Saudi Green Initiative. The goal of planting 10 billion trees is not just a slogan. But where does the water come from? The answer lies in gray water and ultra-absorbent polymer technology. They are using a special type of hydrogel buried beneath tree roots. This gel absorbs moisture from the air at night when desert humidity rises and releases water to the roots during the day. Combined with treated household wastewater transported through a separate pipeline network, this creates a closed-loop cycle. Europe's Sentinel-2 satellites have recorded new green patches appearing on thermal maps of the Rub al Khali Desert. Surface temperatures in these pilot areas have dropped by as much as 2 to 4 degrees Celsius. They are proving that humans can reshape the planet right here on Earth. All of these efforts converge at a single focal point, NEOM, the 500 billion US dollar futuristic megacity. At NEOM, a 100% circular water system is being built. Not a single drop is wasted. Wastewater is treated, reused, treated again, and reused once more. But the centerpiece is the water dam project at Trojina, a ski resort in the middle of the desert. Seawater is being pumped up to an elevation of 2,400 meters to create a massive artificial freshwater lake on a mountain peak, serving both as a landscape feature and as a pumped storage hydropower reservoir. When electricity demand is low, water is pumped up into the lake. When demand rises, water is released downhill to drive turbines. The underground river does more than supply water, it becomes a gigantic energy storage system. Yet the most critical aspect rarely discussed is privatization and the price of water. In the past, water in Saudi Arabia was heavily subsidized and almost free, leading to extreme waste. Citizens once consumed an average of 280 liters per person per day, more than twice the European average. Now the government has changed the rules. It has established the National Water Company and introduced tiered water pricing. Smart water meters are being installed in every household. The message is unmistakable. This artificial river costs billions of dollars to operate, and the era of free water is over. Beyond that, Saudi Arabia is aiming to export this technology. It is investing in desalination projects in Egypt and Jordan. Just as it once exported oil to dominate the global energy market, it now seeks to export water technology to secure a strategic role across the Middle East. What Saudi Arabia is doing is not merely infrastructure engineering, it is survival. They have grasped a fundamental truth of the 21st century, oil can make you wealthy, but only water can keep you alive. In a world where climate change is drying up natural rivers from the Colorado River in the United States to the Rhine in Europe, Saudi Arabia's model suddenly appears strikingly forward-looking.
Steel pipelines buried deep beneath the sand, colossal desalination plants and artificial clouds, all stand as proof that the limits of nature are only temporary barriers to human will and technology. From a nation without a single river, they have created the longest river in the world. From an arid land, they are forcing the desert to bloom. However, intervening in nature always carries enormous risks. On the other side of the globe, the United States once carried out a similarly ambitious experiment by pouring billions of tons of seawater into the heart of a desert. The outcome, however, was a severe environmental disaster that shocked the entire world. The truth behind that massive failure lies in the video now displayed on your screen. Click to watch it immediately.